Guys, how are we doing? Today I'm going to talk to you about eating out and how we can actually enjoy the beautiful occasion of eating out with our friends or family or partners, not feeling like we're depriving ourselves, not stay in the house like a hermit, be able to go out, enjoy life, enjoy your food, but still stay on track with your goals of eating healthily and eating well. Okay guys, let's start with breakfast. So imagine you're staying in a hotel, all you can eat buffet, food everywhere. Sounds great, fantastic. From personal experience, if you go to town to buffet, by God, you regret it afterwards because you can feel a bit nauseous, but what's more, it can undo all the hard work you've done in your training during that week. So there's some real quick little rules that I use myself that help me really manage this. One, I try and get one plate full because guys, when we make food at home, we normally have the one plate. So why does it have to be any different? Just because it's free doesn't mean it's worth it. There is a cost of a buffet. The cost isn't necessarily financial cost. The cost is it's undoing all the work you've done that week. Rather than saying, get your money's worth, why don't you get your money's worth of the training and hard work you've put in on the last seven days, rather than all that being for nothing. So guys, I go for poached eggs when I'm there. I avoid the fried eggs, request poached, or I go for boiled eggs as well. I always go for baked beans as well. I try and go easy on the sauce of the baked beans because a lot of the sugar can actually be in the tomato sauce in the beans itself. I also go for whole grain bread, whole grain bread or whole grain toast, and I don't add butter. The beans adds loads of moisture. I try and find grilled mushrooms if I can't fry it or good, but I'll get some kitchen roll or napkins and I'll just dip some of the oil or rub the oil off the mushrooms if possible to bulk up my dish. If I really want to go back for a second course, there's going to be low fat yogurt there, Greek yogurt and fruit a little bit of sweetener on top to sweeten it, and that's absolutely me. I'll make sure I have a black coffee as well during the meal. Coffee is great for satiating you, and of course have loads of fluid, loads of water as well. If you're going out for breakfast, try and take some of those things into account. Try and get grilled mushrooms, grilled vegetables, try and go for baked beans and an egg source that isn't actually fried, like poached or boiled. Whole grain toast if possible. Try and smash on more veg, a handful of rocket if you can get it. Anything like that can be very, very useful. If you do see porridge being served, by all means, go for that. Make sure it's not served with full fat milk. Ask for it to be served with water. And of course, add sweetener, add fruit. Make sure you enjoy your meal, guys. Super important. I don't want you going through life not enjoying your food. Never gonna work. Okay, lunchtime. I go for a jacket potato and baked beans with a vegetable of some sort on a regular basis. Make sure they don't add butter to your jacket potato because again, with the beans, I find that actually gives it enough moisture. That's a big, big benefit for me. In terms of salads, lunchtime, love a salad, okay? But guys, make sure you ask for dressing on the side and then dip your fork into the dressing and then into the salad. The last thing to leave your lips is that fork, which means the last thing that you taste is that salad dressing. It means you actually get away with using a hell of a lot less. When you're going for a salad, guys, Try and avoid the ones that are very heavy in nuts and seeds because it's very high in calories. People have this misconception that a salad is always healthy. If it's very heavy on a creamy dressing, if it's heavy in nuts and seeds, it's going to be high calorie, guys. If you're going for bacon in the salad, try and make sure it's lean bacon if you're making it yourself. If you're eating out, it's rare to get lean bacon, to be honest. Turkey bacon could be a great lifesaver if you have that option in front of you. Go for a salmon fillet or a chicken fillet. Try and get it grilled if possible. Big, big help, guys. Make sure you hammer on the veg. The more veg, the better. If you're going for a pasta dish, try and make sure that you do things that are going to make that be a little bit lower calorie. Aim for tomato-based sauces. Avoid those creamy sauces when possible. Ask for a side of vegetables on the side, side of vegetables on the side, and avoid it from being sauteed. Have grilled veg if possible. Make sure you fill up on the vegetables halfway through your meal or even before your meal. Try not to be tempted to ask for bread before the dish or before the meal comes out. When you do have bread on the table and you're dipping it into oil, it can be quite high calorie and it can really, really, really add up. Don't over order, guys. You can always order more food. Okay, there's not a shortage in the world. Well, thankfully not where we live anyway in the UK or in Ireland, but there's not a shortage, okay? So guys, don't feel like you have to order more, okay? 
when you're speaking to someone at a meal or at a lunch or a client meeting, make sure you're actually looking at them and you avoid looking at the food where possible. Make sure that you're actively contributing to the conversation and that way if you're speaking you're not eating okay if you're speaking you're not eating it'll slow things down if we can slow down the eating process you're a lot less likely to eat more avoid calorific drinks when you're eating out as well okay moving for a sparkling water and lime or a diet coke can be a great way of saving some calories rather than you filling up on high calorie fluids like wine or like alcohol and as I mentioned before I'm not going to sit here with an Irish accent and pretend I don't drink but guys everything in moderation and if you do drink alcohol before you eat alcohol actually stimulates appetite it will mean that you will want to eat more during the meal so at least try and save the alcohol for after the main meal if you then want a dessert guys try and share it okay have a dessert for two great way of reducing the portion size by 50 percent if you're gonna go for a dessert, try and avoid very creamy ones. Cheesecakes are huge in calories. Five, 600 calories in a small slice, it is scary. Also guys, try and think of fruit and yogurt where possible. Sugar-free jelly can be great if the actual restaurant has it. That can be useful. But guys, think about all the work you've put in and you don't want to undo that. If you're going for a Indian, for example, be very wary of poppadoms. Nan breads can be very calorific. Again, go for tomato-based dishes. Avoid things like cormers that are built on nuts. Avoid things that are very creamy. Go for vegetable dishes. Try and avoid lamb if possible because it can be quite fatty. Go for leaner meats, go for fish, go for chicken if possible, and a tomato base. So like a jalfrezi is great. Rogan Josh is great. These are great ways of keeping the calories down a little bit and make sure that you don't OD on the sauce. In an Indian restaurant, they generally give you the two different trays. Don't strain all the sauce onto the rice. Try and just take out the chicken or take out the vegetables with a spoon and then there'll be enough sauce on that to keep you going. Try and go for plain boiled rice. Avoid special fried rice if possible. Can be very calorific as well. So guys, you want to make sure that you're enjoying your food but you're not overdoing it. If you're going out for a steak, guys, try and go for a sirloin rather than a rump. It's a lot... Uh, or, or, sorry, rather than a ribeye, it's a lot leaner. It's a great way of keeping the fat down. You can cut the fat off the steak before you eat it. Don't go for the one the size of a small dog, okay? Go for a smaller steak, guys. We know that you can fill up on having a side portion of veg. We often don't need that big portion of steak. If you're going to go for fries, go for sweet potato fries because at least they're counting to one of your seven a day. Go for a jacket potato, ask for no butter on it, very powerful. Or go for a side salad, whatever you prefer. Or if you want to go for a mash, explain to them or lie to them and say that you have a dairy intolerance so you can't have any butter or cream in it it's a great little cheat about getting out of having added unwanted calories in that dish if you're going for a sauce i'm a big fan of peppercorn sauce myself but always ask for it on the side and use it sparingly if you cook the steak right i have mine rare if you have it quite Lightly cooked, it means there's enough juices and flavours in that steak that we don't always need a sauce. And that's a big saving of calories that you otherwise would be suffering from if you're having a creamy sauce. If you're going for a Subway, guys, one option I often go for now is I go for one of the wraps they have there, or I go for a whole grain or seeded bread, like a six inch. I make sure I go easy on the cheese. I go for lean meat like chicken, steak if possible. I hammer in the veg, red onions, peppers, lettuce, and I ask them for a tiny slither of light mayonnaise. And I literally watch her like a hawk to make sure she doesn't go to town on it. So you wanna make sure that is a controlled portion. If you're going for a meal out, guys, and you think it's a big social event, it's gonna be huge, and you're afraid you're gonna overeat, little trick, have an apple on the way have an apple on the way high in fiber it will stop you from being starving it will take the edge off that hunger that is super super powerful i hope this was useful guys you might not be able to take away all of the things that i've mentioned but try and write down a couple and as i said before and i'll say it again it's not about the video it's about what you do after this all the best